So when it comes to Chrome OS, we've actually checked it out before, but today we're here with another look at it and well, how does the lollipop, or as I call it, the Chrome lollipop update actually make a difference? So I installed it as a virtual computer and gave it the same specs as a Chromebook and I tested it out. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to an episode of C for Mortar, and as I just mentioned, we are here with the Chrome OS. Now, I've done basically what I normally do on a laptop for the past few weeks in the Chrome environment and have found not bad experience. Now, in terms of what I do on a notebook, I generally do things like script writing for these videos, as well as creating the actual script that goes into the teleprompter on PowerPoint and various other things like that. Now, obviously, I didn't use Word and PowerPoint. I used the uh, Google alternatives to that, and they weren't actually half that bad. Now, already being a Chrome user and all those kind of things, moving to Chrome OS was actually fairly simple. The setup didn't actually take that much effort and all my files were ready to go. Now in terms of Chrome OS and Chromebooks in general, they don't really offer the same flexibility and expansion as a PC or even Mac does when it comes to this kind of stuff, but why on earth would I even give it a try, you're probably asking. Well the reason for that is, well, with most of my life being more and more online, having Google Chrome OS is actually not that half bad. Now, everything that I do from script writing to just general research for class stuff can be done on an online browser and mainly being Google Chrome being a kind of glorified browser you could say having this kind of experience isn't that bad and well I guess we better move on to with some issues I may have found with it and obviously when setting up in a virtual machine there's always a few problems here and there but it was a very good experience and really I found no kind of uh, issues at all with that and really how does it compare to an iOS or actual Android device well the reason why we're comparing it to an Android and iOS device is it can't really mimic what an actual desktop or even a laptop can do at this point. It can do some things like browse the internet the same, but really the specs and just basically all those kind of things hold it back. Now in terms of specs I gave it, I gave it two gigabytes of RAM with two mobile cores and 15 gigs of storage to kind of emulate what an actual Chromebook would actually give the operating system, which is generally two gigs of RAM, two cores and 15 gigs of storage. Now the storage is obviously a very low point and I could have given it more, but I did want to try out what the actual Google Google Cloud experience was this time round and obviously it wasn't that bad. Apps and everything sunk perfectly and I had no problem moving from my kind of desktop more experience where I was running Chrome OS to something like my phone if I wanted to go out on the bus or something like that and vice versa if I started a document when I was out traveling I could easily pick up from where I left from on the actual desktop which is actually really something that I like on the actual Mac and iOS side that I wish was more on the Windows and Android kind of side. So I did spend lots of time in obviously the Chrome browser as well as Google Docs and Google PowerPoints, whatever they're called, the PowerPoint equivalent, and it was very snappy and intuitive UI. I found no issues with actually getting around the Chrome OS desktop itself, and there was no lags or stutters like I was actually expecting. Many of the experiences of just moving around the operating system was very fluid and smooth, and obviously with those new Android updates that came to the Android side that are now seeping their way into other Google surfaces, I'm not actually half that surprised. Now the only few issues that I could actually come up with with this OS is actually not really much of its fault. Number one, the actual problem with the lack of file manager was an issue for me as I like to manage my files and just not being able to do anything else really than browse the internet as we have here was kind of an issue for me. There was really the download location and your Google Drive, that's really all you could store data. and. Whilst that might have been a problem for me before, I've kind of looked over it as you're not really downloading any files. Anything you do download is only really put into the download folder and then deleted. So there's pointless having an actual kind of proper browser put into the actual program. And really, these devices come out with very minimal storage. So even if it did have a proper browser, there would just be no point because there's nowhere to actually store your files. And then I suppose another problem was with the actual virtual experience. If you are going to set up a virtual experience, it doesn't give you a time countdown on the actual battery life. It tells you the percentage, but other than that, it doesn't actually tell you the time. So that might be an issue for you. Other than that, I had no real issues with it. It's a nice, well-polished OS, and I really, with the Android L kind of updates, it makes it even more nice and fluid to actually get around, and really, everything just flat out worked, and for me, an operating system is like a joke. If it needs explaining, it's not good, and honestly, this operating system doesn't need that much of an explanation. So then this does beg the question, well, who is this for, and what can it actually replace? Well, we'll start off with what it can actually replace. At the time of recording today, it can easily replace 
replace your Android or iOS tablet as it is able to browse web pages in their full entirety desktop experience and is also to better equipped for typing up Word documents and those kind of things as it can actually sit on your lap as opposed to an Android or iOS tablet because they generally need stands or some sort of case to sit in to actually go ahead and do that. Also too, they offer an actual laptop experience where you can have that and also to a touchscreen experience if you do spring for a more expensive model that does have a touchscreen. Now who would this be for, you're probably asking? Well, other than me who likes to be online all the time, a student would definitely be a great fit for this. Because of being a student, you're at school with Wi-Fi connectivity and then you're at home with Wi-Fi connectivity making everything that that you have to do online in this operating system actually work. Now also too, being a student, you generally want to have all your files saved and well, without actually much internal storage here, you're forced to save it on the cloud. Now this is fairly good in a few reasons. Number one, if your device is stolen or damaged, you're not going to have to worry about all those documents that were saved on that local hard drive because there wasn't enough storage anyway to go ahead and save it. It's all saved up in your cloud and it's very handy there. Also too, if the device does run out of battery, if you do have an Android or really any other phone on the market today, you can go ahead and actually pull all your documents off your Google Drive straight onto that phone. For example, if you needed to send that essay in that you didn't send in, you can easily do that there. And really, it isn't really a feature of the Google Chrome OS platform itself, but it is a nice fact that Google is just well integrated into this. Also too, being a student, you generally do a lot of research and having full-size web pages that actually load properly and have all the flash support is very, very handy because I don't know how many times people have come to me saying that this page isn't loading when it turns out they need flash player and well iOS tablets like iPad don't have flash player support at the time of recording. Now in terms of the laptop and desktop side I don't feel this is ready to actually replace it. Yes there is an app store and you can get applications you are limited by the 15 gigabytes of internal storage and also too you're kind of limited by what's on that actual app store. There's not actually that much there in terms of gaming compared to something like the Windows side where you have the Steam library to go through through and in terms of actual games that are on there don't expect anything too high-end in terms of like Watch Dogs or anything along those lines GTA 5 for example because of the fact these Chromebooks are so underpowered you wouldn't be getting that anyway these are really good for browsing the internet and as it decides to turn off do all those other things and well to start to wrap up this video do I actually feel Chromebooks are today ready to take off and replace your Android and even Mac device if you did want to do that and the answer is very it depends. It depends on whether you're an online worker and it depends on what exactly you're doing. For me, it can easily replace an Android or iOS device, but in terms of Mac OS X and Windows, you're going to be hard pushed there because on the Windows side, you've got a basically unlimited resource of games available to you to do. And on the Mac side, you have a lot of, well, kind of productivity applications that just can't be emulated on the actual Chrome side. Chromebooks are kind of underpowered, but in saying that, I'm sure over time as we get better devices, we'll see better longer battery life and also to a lot better support in terms of different processes and hopefully a bigger storage solution. Now for me to have this as a proper replacement, this definitely needs to start off with having a lot more storage options and also to allowing me to have a proper file browser. Yes, it's all good to be on Online, but especially when you've got terrible internet speeds being online might not be the best option and definitely people with data caps will definitely find it hard to get really a lot done on this because it does rely a lot on the internet once you do reach that capacity of your internal storage you are kind of stuck and just like on the Android side or even iOS side you will be struggling and trying to find what programs you can uninstall so you can get that little bit of storage back I would also too like to see a lot more offline support but again as Google is continuing on being Google and awesome, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next few updates we see, we actually get a better experience overall and in general, it's a very well polished and intuitive operating system from coming from not that much a few years ago. I do like where it's at now. So I guess on that note, guys, that wraps up the video and whenever the next big release of Chrome OS comes out, I guess we'll do another video covering what I think about it and where it's at at the time of recording. So guys, like or dislike the video accordingly. Let me know what you think of Chrome OS. Do you think it's useful in some ways or do you think it's absolutely useless? Also to check out cpmodder.com as you can see right there and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Thanks for watching.